Hi, I'm Miran El Haideri, and this summer I did research on energy harvesting from piezoelectric devices um, as part of uh, my participation in the SURE program at the University of Michigan under the uh, sponsorship of Dr. Wenslaw. And now before we begin, I'm going to give you some background information on what piezoelectricity is. Um, it can be defined as the ability for some materials to generate an electric potential or voltage when a mechanical strain is um, applied to them. And piezo literally means to uh, squeeze or press in Greek, so it's an appropriate name. And right here I actually have a uh, sample of one of the strips that I used this summer. Uh, and as you can see, if I move it like this, it bends, and that's all it really takes to produce a voltage response from these things. Uh, it's pretty small, it's not so big, but I guess it's large compared to uh, most piezo strips. Right. Um, uh, some potential uses for piezo strips uh, would be as an alternative form of energy uh, that could uh, uh, grab energy from the environment or harvest it and uh, store it to a more useful form um, so that it could be used to actually power something and not just get wasted. Um, also, it would uh, circumvent the need for uh, batteries in many mobile and uh, handheld devices, uh, and as well as uh, micro power applications that um, only need a uh, power at certain uh, points. Uh, some people are discussing uh, uh, implementing piezo strips in, in bridges to uh, monitor the stresses and strains at uh, different points so that you can um, have a more accurate uh, understanding, I guess, of uh, whether or not the bridge is stable. Um, now, before you can uh, design any circuitry for piezoelectricity, you need to characterize the strips, as you can see. Um, the maximum voltage I was able to draw out of these piezo strips was uh, 300 volts, uh, which is relatively high, although the uh, source impedance is also very high, making the uh, power coming from these strips uh, somewhat low, on the order of 100 milliwatts. Uh, the resonant frequency of the natural uh, maximum power frequency of the strips is 30 hertz, which is somewhat low, but um, it's still in the audio range. Uh, for testing the uh, piezo strips, uh, I clamped it uh, on a desk and uh, just did a simple uh, uh, step response. So basically just pressing the piezo down and letting it go and watching it uh, naturally oscillate. And as you can see uh, on the bottom of the slide, uh, there is a graph of the voltage versus time uh, for the step response. And uh, the voltages, the oscillations start out and then d quickly die off um, as the piezo slows down. Um, so what is energy harvesting? Uh, energy harvesting can be defined as the process in which energy is derived from an external source, captured, and then stored for later use. Uh, and the goal of this project was to design a power supply that would maximize the amount of energy captured and stored uh, from the piezo strips. Here's a simple block diagram for the uh, power supply. Um, here we have the incoming uh, AC signal from the piezo, and then it is transformed down to a lower voltage to be more easily uh, implemented. And then it is rectified and smoothed to create a DC effect and then stored on an uh, input capacitor so that it can be fed into a voltage regulator that will keep a constant voltage across um, the piezo. Okay, so here's a simplified circuit schematic for what I just showed you. Uh, it's pretty simple. It just has the uh, strip connected to a transformer, which is then connected to a full wave bridge rectifier, which is then connected to the voltage regulator, as I just showed you. Um, and com picking out components for uh, the circuit was probably one of the most challenging aspects of the project because uh, it involved using certain components uh, in ways that they're not designed to be used, su such as the transformers, which uh, had to have a high impedance turns ratio in, able in, in order to match the, p the impedance coming from the piezo. Also, they had to be relatively low power. Uh, less than 100 milliwatts, which is not very typical for most transformers, and um, they had to be high efficiency. Now, the buck converter that I chose to use um, had to be de specially designed to work with high impedance applications, and um, 
the, essentially the way it works is it transfers a charge from an input capacitor onto a output capacitor intermittently in order to uh, regulate the voltage at one fixed level. Because the amount of voltage coming from the piezo is varying with time. Uh, future things to consider in this project would have to be uh, a more adaptable uh, circuit design, which uh, doesn't use the same uh, setup uh, if you're using, let's say, high, getting a high voltage response as opposed to a low voltage. You wouldn't need the transformer if you didn't have a lot of voltage coming from the piezo. Um, also, there are other regulators out there that could uh, accomplish the same thing and probably or possibly be more efficient. Uh, that's something worth looking into. And piezo excitation using multiple strips is another possibility for the project. It would harness more power at once and uh, allow for greater energy storage and quicker. Uh, also, some demonstrations of piezo charging a battery uh, or powering a sensor uh, should definitely be considered for the future. Um, and now to summarize my research experience. Uh, I gained hands-on lab experience uh, both designing and testing circuits. And uh, this is something that I didn't have a lot of experience coming into the project with. So I'm definitely um, very glad that I was able to uh, have that over the summer. And also, uh, I made my first uh, printed circuit board uh, completely from scratch. And I learned to use many valuable software tools, including LabVIEW, to automate my uh, testing process, as well as PCB Artist uh, and Microsoft Visio. Um, and I'd like to thank the SURE program, uh, as well as Dr. Wenslaw, for allowing me to do research this summer. Uh, and uh, thank you, and I hope you enjoyed my presentation. <laughs>